Why is this guy's arm so long? Well, there are certain diagnoses where if your arm span is longer than the height of your body, you can be at risk for having Marfan syndrome. What does this startling declaration tell you about how much Western doctors know about African morphology and biology? Leonardo da Vinci's famous Vitruvian Man is regarded as one of the most iconic images of Western civilization. It depicts a man with outstretched arms within a square, signifying, among other things, the ideal proportions are represented in a one-to-one -one relationship between one's arm span and their height. However, these ideals are not universal. In fact, in terms of anthropometry, Africans are in general known to have comparatively longer tibias, longer arms, broader shoulders and shorter torsos. This is described as a tropical adaption. It ultimately results in the arm span of Africans to, on average, fall 6 to 15% above the 1 to 1 Vitruvian proportions. Conversely, Europeans, on average, typically fall 3 to 1% below it, a cold weather adaption. The ancient Egyptians were no exception to these averages when the limb proportions of the pharaonic lineage for 18th and 19th dynasties were compared to modern ethnic groups. They clustered well within the anthropometric norms for quote-unquote Negro modern Africans, yet well above the range typical for modern Eurasians. Another study that tested 150 noble Egyptians spanning from the Badarian and pre-dynastic through to the Middle Kingdom periods found that, on average, the ancient Egyptians possessed super-negroid limb proportions at the extreme nilotic end of the African spectrum, as shown in the typically short-torsoed, long-limbed portraits seen throughout Kemetic history and reflected in virtually all the mummified remains of dynastic Egyptians. Because of this irksome and indisputable link that effectively proved the native African nature of the ancient Egyptians, Zahi Hawass and other Egyptologists were desperate to find a diagnosis of Marfan syndrome amongst the pharaonic lineages. However, in a thorough 2010 autosomal DNA study, no such traits were found, obviously confirming that their African body plans were indeed a natural tropical occurrence. This complemented later STR profiling analysis of the same autosomal DNA results, clustering the same pharaonic line as on average 20 times closer match probability to black Africans than Eurasians. So, in short, whilst the ancient Egyptians would have fallen well outside of the da Vincian ideal of perfection and the one-to-one -one ratio falsely promoted by Western medicine, they were perfectly in situ on the continent, not only is the insinuation of disability incorrect, it's insulting and insensitive to melanated Africans who see these proportions at a high frequency within their communities. It's scary to think in 2023 that a qualified MD would not be aware of this fundamental morphological difference between Africans and Europeans. Modern Europeans are not the model of the human form, if anything, being that all people descend from Africans, the African body should be regarded as the default and the Vitruvian proportions. To that end should be considered a recent European mutation.